Hi, just a quick video here. Uh, this is the Red Sea Max 400 LED upgrade that I uh, I've only just finished. One of the guys on the, the forum that I use, the Refuge, and got a lot of advice from asked me to do a, a quick video just to go through um, what I've done. He's looking at, at doing a similar thing, so I thought I'd create a video, stick it on the internet so uh, other people can benefit from my experience and mainly the mistakes that I made so I'll go through a few of them um, and hopefully you can all learn from it so the only thing noticeable from the original hood are these two cables uh, if you can see them I'll try and pull them out they're not originally on the on the Red Sea Max and it just links the the back part of the hood to the the front part uh, obviously it's detachable if I w wanted to um, link it the, the, the tidiest possible way I needed to do it underneath. I could have possibly drilled through the middle part of the hood but actually underneath there I've kept two T, uh, T5 lights and the original moon light LEDs it's pretty much impossible for me to show you but uh, they are still in there they're not turned on at the minute um, so because I wanted to keep those I had to, to basically snip um, a corner of the slash guard, uh, the splash guard on each end and just run it through stuck a little self adhesive cable management there and then and run it through the back it's not really noticeable from from the front um, unless you're looking for it um, you, your eyes would tend to be on the, on the main tank so that was a, well that wasn't really a mistake um, obviously I intended to do it the one thing I didn't realize is that, um, let me just lift the hood up, the actual heat sink is curved. Now, I basically stripped the whole thing out. There were um, plastic, um, plastic covers here which used to obviously hold the, the T5 globes. Actually this part here, which looks like it's solid, is, is hollow and that's where the drivers for the, the T5 globes were again I stripped all that out um, it's got a few cables and things running running through there to try and tidy it up but the the majority of the cables actually run through act uh, straight on the on the heat sink I've used some aluminium tape to try and reflect the the heat and also obviously uh, minimize any any light that's uh, escaped um, red and blue cables easiest things to, to find at JCAR um, just so I know what um, if it's a plus or a, or a minus on the LED. Obviously if you get those wrong the, the things don't turn on. I've managed to keep the switch. This is a, was originally in the, in the Red Sea Max anyway. Um, but I managed to wire the, uh, the, the, the rapid LED controller to this. So when I lift the hood up for maintenance I don't get blinded. Um, you can see it's pretty bright. I'll just turn it back on again and I'll show you the the colour layout if the camera picks it up. So um, across both heat sinks, which is obviously this is the front one, the back one's exactly the same, but I'll show you in the front one anyway. We've got um, in total there's 20 royal blues, um, 12 blues, five, four reds, eight UVs, um, eight neutral white, 14 cool white two green, two cyan and I think that's it. Um, so it's got a good colour spectrum. At the minute I'm just uh, just running with whatever it turned on with to be honest. I haven't played around with it all that much. I'll quickly show you where the, the driver is. It's just in my chiller compartment. So all the, uh, all the equipment was bought from Rapid LED as far as the LEDs and um, the controller and obviously the cable, uh, the cables and all that sort of stuff. Any additional stuff I just got from the from JCAR, the local um, supplier in Australia. So I'll just go through and give you the the layout. Obviously we've got on off, which is here. Mode. This switches it. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Mode. It actually switches it through the different channels. Now if you look, there's three channels there. I believe the first one is my two royal blue drivers, the second one is my cool white and neutral white, the third one has cyan, UV, 
uh, sign UV and something else, I forgot what it is. Red, that's the one. So if you flick it onto mode, you can see that this looks like it's the, let's have a look what this one is. This is the coloured. So it looks like we've got, yep, yeah, cyan, oh there's blue on there as well, blue UV, cyan and uh, red. And then mode number two. As you can see by the tank, that one's white and uh, cool white. And then the final mode or final channel is the royal blues. Um, obviously, you can tell straight away just from the, the fluorescence of the different corals and things. And then you've got the final mode, which is, is all of them on. Now, each, each of these modes or channels is individually dimmable. I don't quite know how it dims it, I, I counted 20 beeps before it goes back to the start, uh, 19 or 20 beeps, it seems to be different on each channel, I don't really know how it works, but uh, you can make them all individual, so you've got manual mode where you just turn the thing on and off, and obviously whatever you've, whatever dimmable settings you've set in that mode will just uh, will save, or there's daylight one mode, uh, it, it does a, a kind of sun, sunrise to sunset, same as uh, Daylight 2 and Daylight 3, I think they're just different different times, but I've not really read into it too much. And to act, the, the thing that I don't really like about it, it hasn't got a built-in programmer or, or timer, so you're going to have to plug it into a timer. I haven't done it yet, but you have to plug it into a timer, um, any digital or, or one of these old start analog timers. You can just plug it in there and let it turn itself on and off. And if you leave it in the daylight mode, it does the obviously the sunrise and sunset. If you leave it in manual mode, it's just on and off. I may wire it into the the built-in timers now because I don't really need them anymore. I'm always going to keep the LED mood lights on. I think for the uh, which are the original ones, which are up in the the middle heat sink that we looked at. Um, and I will probably just wire it into this second one here, and just have the. Um, I have a switch assigned to the T5s, I don't really want to use them, the whole point of doing the, the LED upgrade. The reason number one was for uh, to, to save energy, and reason number two uh, was so I don't have to keep buying the, the different globes. And Obviously you, you do get a, a, be a better colour with the, the LEDs, I've definitely noticed the difference. Previously I was running, uh, I think it was for Actinix, um, the, basically the stock bulbs um, with uh, two replaced and that was a, um, uh, a Fiji purple I think it was called and a uh, super blue and it, was, it wasn't too bad but I definitely see an improvement in colour especially when I've played around with the settings I've not really got them how I like them yet um, since I reset the, um, the controller but let me show you the drivers anyway the, uh, this is where I put the drivers I was going to run it through where the chiller sits, but as you can see, these things are pretty big. Um, I did not expect them to be this size. I've never, never seen a DIY LED job before. I just pretty much did it from, from videos on YouTube and, and the research that I found. If I'd known, I possibly wouldn't have used these. Uh, they are easy to use. Basically, you just screw off the top and inside there, there's a little um, uh, a little uh, white screw called SVR2. You turn it down to all the way to the bottom. If you're using uh, any of the coloured uh, LEDs like the the blues or the the UVs, the reds, for the royal blues and the um, the whites, you can kind of just leave them as the as they come, which is running about 1.3 amp. Um, the, that'll be fine for them. The other ones you need to turn them down and then gradually turn them up use a, a multimeter to test the um, the, uh, the current running through them and they've all got different currents so the, probably the most complicated part is the planning of what you're going to run on, on which drivers um, and then also if you're going to run more than one um, one controller or, or, or a more complicated controller to, con to control the dimmable features then I would um, I'd probably spend a bit more time than I, I, I did originally just going through it all and making sure that I've got it right because I didn't really know what I was doing and I kind of just uh, spent a lot of time playing around with it when I, I didn't really need to, it's not that difficult. 
I connected everything with Molex connectors, tried to tie wrap it all, but all this is hidden anyway, so I'm not too bothered that it's a little bit untidy. Um, everything's pretty much disconnectable within a, either a twist of a screwdriver or um, unclip the Molex connectors, and that enables me to, to move things around and change it around if I want to. So I'll leave that there. Um, I'm running on all the cables that I have used through the, the stock management. So this isn't the cable you can buy. This is actually um, a cable that I bought from JCAR and that I used heat uh, shrink to, to run it through. Got the, the, the cable as I wanted it, labeled them all, and then just heated it up. Obviously it does what it says in the tin, it's a heat shrink, so it shrinks around the cables, keeps them nice and tight so I can run it through the existing cable management, which comes with the, the tank anyway, and then just drops down the back, and it's the same on the other side. So this one actually runs the, um, the negative um, part to the drivers, and on the, the flip side it's the positive. This is the T5 cable, the original cable that came with the, uh, the light fixture. And there is one other cable here. Now this actually runs from the, um, the plus on the controller up to this switch. So when you press the switch down, it completes the circuit. Um, the reason I did it that way is because if you run it any other way, if you run it through um, any of these three red cables here, it means you'd have to actually um, change it and buy new switches and everything else. The quickest and easiest way I could find was to just break the, break the circuit or complete the circuit with this white cable because um, this is the, the positive connection for all of the six drivers. So you can, obviously you can only see one cable there and that's because I've used a, a grouping device to group all the cables together to keep it nice and clean. But um, there, the, the all, all six cables link to this one white cable here and these three red cables all have two drivers each linked to them. So there's three cables but six drivers. Um, and that's it really. Would I do it again? Mm, I don't know. It took me quite a long time. Much longer than I expected. Um, it cost me around, well it cost me under a thousand dollars in total. I bought a lot of stuff that I didn't need to buy really. I went to, to J-Cart, had lots of great ideas, never really, uh, never really did anything with them. I bought mounds of cable that I'll never use before uh, and I'll never use again. One thing I did make a, a big mistake because as I said before, these heat, uh, heat sinks are curved. The, there's not really many ways you can stick them on the top. So what I did was use the uh, the thermal adhesive paste, which is okay for 90% of them, but there's a couple that it just didn't stick properly. And I was getting to the point where I was spending nearly $150, $200 just on this bloody um, adhesive paste. So you can probably see there that in the end, any ones that were loose, I left the paste on there because the whole point of them being there is to create a nice um, firm contact with the heatsink. And I actually just screwed them in to, to keep them in, in place firmly. I know it's working because when I feel the, the top of the, the heat sink, it is pretty warm. And if I quickly, these lights have been on all day, if I quickly slide the, the top off and touch any of these LEDs, although I've just got a really shock, the, they're actually not hot at all. So I know the, the, the thermal paste doing its job. Um, they're not running warm at all really. They're not running at that full whack. But when I did do, yesterday when I did do the full, um, full power test for eight hours, it was fine. No problems whatsoever. In the summer, I may add a couple of uh, standard 10 centimeter fans on there, maybe four, two on, one here, one here, and um, another couple on the back as well. But we'll see how we go with the, the temperature. It doesn't seem to get um, anywhere near as hot as the T5s did. Um, and they all seem to be working, no problems whatsoever. So if you've got any questions, so let me know, like I say, you can find me on the, the Refuge or you can um, get me on YouTube if I, if I decide to post it on there.